Hello my soccer universe to another shirt talk video and this time we're talking about club shirts and what makes for a great club shirt. Now the idea came when I unpacked this Bremen jersey from the past season where on the face of it it's just your regular green shirt with a little bit maybe the slightly differently colored Sleeves are a little bit odd, but what really took me back is if you go a little bit deeper, there is so much to look at, so many details, so many references. I made out quite a few from uh, uh, an old style soccer ball to the Bremen town musicians, which are kind of here hidden. Then there's a fishy somewhere in there. There's, um, I think, the old uh, lightning of the old Weser Stadion, so the, uh, the lights of the old Weser Stadion, which were kind of iconic. Many, many differences. And I came very quickly to, to the conclusion this is one of the best, not, not among my favorite, but one of the best club jerseys that I've seen. It has everything that I want to have in a club jersey, uh, despite it being rather, rather simple. The next thought is, uh, was, or is still, actually German clubs not only are doing a really good job at that, but they also originated something which we'll come to in this video uh, as well. And yeah, that was an interesting find. I found a few trends in different countries that we'll get to. But before we get there, I think we have to start where it always starts. At the very beginning, and this means at the very beginning of liking football shirts for me personally. So I, more or less my formative years watching football were in the 90s. So there will always be, and this is, if you have been born a little bit later, you may have other uh, periods where uh, you will have kind of an emotional attachment to. For me, it's definitely uh, the period of the 90s. The 90s were also, in the sense, a great period because uh, this was the first time when football shirts or soccer shirts became a true, um, not only, um, it, they were marketed more to fans. You could, they, uh, clubs realized, okay, with uh, shirt sales, we actually can make some money and we may not only appeal to the players on the pitch, but we actually, with some crazy designs, we actually might make it into uh, the fashion part as well. And so um, this kind of is the perfect storm. And I want to show you a few uh, shirts that actually that I have in my collection that actually stood out for me even back then. I want to start out with this uh, Juventus jersey, which is kind of uh, among my first mem mem memories. Uh, you know, the plunging necklace is still very, very old, but it's uh, very much uh, it, it, um, a Serie A team of the early 90s. But what it had already, it had this kind of pattern in there, which was always intriguing to me. Uh, that shirts had this pattern, football shirts had these patterns in there. They, they weren't on the plane and they were also here, maybe better here. You can see there are some Juventus logos woven in there as well. So this is one really early example. And this with the shadow pattern in there, this makes the shirt not only it is plain from a distance, but you have something to look at. It makes it rather, rather appealing from up close as, as well, which adds another layer. Um, other examples for that is, of course, this Sampdoria shirt. Um, also very classic. You see there's even more. I think it's better to see on the back here. Uh, <laughs> now the ERG is going through. But there's kind of a net a soccer ball. There's a Sampdoria crest as well in there. So there is a lot of things going on, which make the shirt, again, plain from, from, from a distance. And this has already a little bit of a retro feel with the tight down collar. So uh, plain from a distance, but up close, there's quite something to look at, which makes a shirt really, really, really cool. Similar to the Bremen shirt. But for me, the outstanding uh, jerseys from that era were actually, and it's more, it's again more as a, um, a personal journey, but were the Ajax shirts. Uh, here's the 94 95 Ajax home shirt, uh, where you can see that uh, not only does it have, again, 
the classic Ajax design. Maybe we can talk about the collar and the sleeve cuffs a little bit crazy, but um, it had also the sponsor in a slightly dif different co 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 configuration. But um, you see also not only are there Umbro diamonds, but there's also the club logo is uh, put into the fabric, which really makes it again, playing from a distance, very interesting to look at. However, then a couple of seasons later, this was taken to a completely different level by uh, this Ajax shirt, um, which is my first Ajax shirt. And again, I turned, I, I turned around. Not only do we have something in there, but it also makes reference to, I think this is the town hall of Amsterdam. You see the tower here. It went a little bit overboard with all this Ajax writing, Ajax, Ajax, Ajax. And it's a little bit too much of a collage, but I really like that there was at least a reference to the city of Amsterdam and then this was repeated in smaller uh, versions here on the site. So this is very early, early on. I was always in intrigued. I found this a really interesting way of making a shirt. Again, looking plain from, from a distance, but when you look, look up close, you get a little bit a special feel. This came to Germany a little bit later as well, this trend. And I, I wanna show it for you. I mean, I wear this Hertha shirt. Um, where in Germany, uh, I think especially Adidas in the late 90s, um, came up not with their stock uh, template judges, but they made they tried to make everything special for each club and giving everything a retro feel. This Hertha jersey, Hertha doesn't wear um, horizontal stripes. However, it made it initially it made it immediately look kind of retro and kind of cool already. And then there is, is of course. This Stuttgart jersey, uh, and Stuttgart was a very successful team at, at the time that not only had a completely new look uh, ad at the time, but however, making a reference to the club's famous jazz, jazz band, which is one of the few uh, truly unique um, looks in Germany, but then also giving it a retro look with the, uh, with the red and, and, and the black hoops. And in, in addition, you have the club crest replicated over and over in the entire jersey again making uh the jersey even stand out for someone who has, has it up close even more so these are just a few examples and i will always go back to that so what i want to do is now is to look at a few ways that you will make me like your club jersey Okay, the first way, of course, is to just replicate what has been done in the 80s and, and the 90s. And I want to show, because we will see a lot of smaller brands, but actually Nike did this with this PSG uh, jersey. Again, has the same pr principle, but what comes in it is there's this diagonal shadow striping in there as well, where it writes also Paris, 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 or Paris on there, which is a reference to a home jersey from the early 90s. It's more or less an exact replica and it works beautifully. Uh, also, what has been done in the ninth in, in the nineties is this kind of this shadow striping. And in the late eighties, there was an Adidas Tanta template that had actually um, some diagonal um, patterning in there as well, which Jaco took for this Leverkusen shirt. Leverkusen won the UEFA Cup, is now the Europa League in a 88, wearing a very similar pattern to this one. So it's just replicating what has been done. Of course, back then they didn't have crests. Bundesliga jerseys in the 80s were rather boring. They were rather stock. But one way to do it is really go like the 80s. Or you can also repeat the club crests within the material, which is what Freiburg did uh, with Hummel here. It's an interesting quartered look. Also kind of came became popular with Adidas Tamp in the late 90s, uh, to my recollection. However, um, it goes with this one and then adds the bird from the club crest, kind of creating a little bit more of a feel to it. But also, this is uh, taking the uh, page out of, of the book from the 90s. Another way that you will always please me is, of course, if you replicate a look that has been worn in these, but make a modern interpretation. Uh, first one is this Mönchengladbach shirt back there, where uh, the way it's 
a modern interpretation, but it does the same thing as you know the green with a little bit of a black in there. This was a classic Gladbach look of the 80s. Uh, I have here a few more shirts, and this is actually I think Italian teams are doing really, 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 really well. But before we get to Italian, I mean uh, New Balance and Liverpool also did that well. I mean this jersey, it's straight going back kind of to the pinstripe look from from the 80s and it's an absolute beauty uh yes with the template of the shirt with this boxed up top is maybe a little bit odd but no one really looked at it. everyone saw the pinstripes and everyone thought yeah this is going back to one of the most successful periods of the club i have here three more and these are now from italy but i think we have uh one more back there with the Fiorentina shirt, which goes back straight to the 80s. Um, we also have here the Juventus shirt, which is not, uh, which is kind of an in, 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 in between. When Juventus won the Champions League in 96, they were wearing a blue shirt with two yellow stars here on, on the side, which is kind of what this shirt is doing here, but it puts the stars around the crest, namely because there are three stars on top of each other at that time. Juve claimed they had already 30 championships. The Italian league, of course, did not think so. That's why we have that, that look here, but this is kind of a modern retro version, which we also get here with Parma. Again, um, this is going straight back to the UEFA Cup winning jersey from 1999. I think this was by uh, Champion. This classic, a little bit bee-like look, but what a great jersey it is. A little bit of a modern interpretation with adding all the dots, which is so rare to kind of add a little bit depth, but in in at its core, this is a retro jersey. A it lot of the jerseys they like have actually horizontal stripes. I don't know what about it is, but they make they make it look cool to me. <laughs> which also applies to the next one, uh, which is the third reissue of this famous famous template by Inter, which uh, takes the famous 1998 UF, uh, Europa League or UEFA Cup winning jersey by Inter. Um, cleans it up a little, a little bit, makes the colors a little bit more black and gray than they were in the original and adding a slightly different color, but basically replicating the overall look and feel of it's it. Clean look, it looks retro without being retro. This is a very, very well executed jersey, even with the weird uh, placing of the logos, San Central like sponsor, but the Nike swoosh is here on the side. Uh, which actually screams for something put there, but you know, uh, this was also very much 90s. So in that sense, it's a really, really good shirt, I have, have to say. And then of course, uh, for me, could show you, of course, the Milan Centenary jersey, which uh, goes even further, but I want to stay with the look of the 80s and 90s. For me, the Piesta Resistance is what Lazio did in 1890, after they have done it before. We bring back this famous eagle look from the early 80s when they hired a, a, a designer to reinvent themselves, and he came up with a crest, with this eagle, and then with a jersey that is a true standout. I know. Part of me thinks that Lazio should wear uh, always the light blue. I have to be honest, I absolutely love this look. This is absolutely gorgeous. And gorgeous look. I look the colors, everything, the eagle, it fits perfectly. This is how you do a retro jersey. Also note that the Macron logos here are white. So to add a little bit to that great feel. Other ways of kind of uh, making it more special would be to make a reference to a local artist or some, uh, some something special, making a reference to the locale where the Crafted for Culture really, really excelled. I have here the uh, Stad Ren jersey uh, where um, the pattern on it is based on the mosaic artist who also was a club chairman, which makes it already a standout. However, I think the earliest... Um, Example that I have in my collection of this is this PSG 0607 away jersey, which straight went for the Louis Vuitton look. I mean, it's not Louis Vuitton uh, based on the logos, and so he he is he's a sponsor. But with all the patterning, the way it is done, with how the PSG looks, how the Eiffel Tower looks, and then uh, also the um, the dove here taken from the crest. Uh, it is very much, you immediately think Louis Vuitton. 
and of course the brown and the gold it's very it's very parisian in that sense um, of course the other fashion capital in europe is milan and milan had also undercrafted for culture this third jersey where you have the houndstooth pattern which was a staple of the milan fashion going here on the bottom but fading onto the top we of course can discuss is this a proper color no I actually would have preferred this in red and then going over in black. I think this would have been a much better Milan jersey. However, what I like in this one, and this is the best, I think, of the, Milan, uh, of the Milan's crafted by Culture Kids, is that it actually makes this reference to Milan as a fashion metropolis. The next way, and one of my favorite ways to make a jersey really, really nice, is to make a reference to your city. And this is kind of can be done in a few ways. I think here we have two jerseys, the Utrecht jersey, I, I, I just both. It makes, uses the flag of Utrecht, which is the diagonal design in its base design. And then it also has the tower of the cathedral of Utrecht. Speaking of flags, PSV Eindhoven very often has this checkerboard pattern, which is of course the flag of North Brabant, where, the, uh, where Eindhoven is located. So uh, that is also a pretty, pretty nice feature. So I wanted to point out those two up there. You can go and I admit that this jersey I'm showing you is not the prettiest, but you of course can put a map on your jersey. This is a uh, Roma 1819 third jersey. We can discuss the color. Oh, but there's a full city map of Rome on there uh, in so much detail that you can even make out uh, like the Colosseum, uh, the Capitol and Hill, um, the Piazza Navona, uh, Vatican, everything, even the uh, stadium, it's all on there. And it has also, and it's a little bit hard, hard, hard to see from, from, from a distance, but here the outline is actually the Lupetto, the wolf's head onto itself uh, so i think this is one idea although i think that barcelona have done this a little bit better i don't have any of these of putting the city map on there uh, or as i said you make a, a reference to a local landmark which is for instance what this uh start Reims jersey did again execution we may not like how I, I personally am not a huge the biggest fan of how the shoulders here look look like because i don't like the point i think i would have liked this a little bit more organic however what i like is that this pattern here is in reference to the cathedral of Reims uh, and in, in particular to the stained glass windows yes it's an abstract pattern but i can clearly see the reference and also is replicated on the sleeve cuff so it makes it really really nice clear reference there and they have done it before as well in more subtle patterns like the uh, arches on a great jersey and so on of course and now this is i think where german teams really kicked it into the next level make jerseys that reference local culture and i think i might be wrong here but i think it started when 1860 munich release an Oktoberfest jersey in the traditional Bavarian look. Um, and I think it was late 2000s, uh, early, 20, uh, early 2010s when this is started. And then uh, not shortly thereafter, Bayern Munich, although they do release it now, but they released for one season an away jersey that had the Oktoberfest aesthetic. Now, uh, at first, yes, it's a Bayern jer a jersey. It has very much this traditional look with the colors here, but it's the details that really sell the, 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 this jersey. For, first of all, it's kind of an off-white with the brown and the green, which is very much traditional clothing. Uh, for Bavaria, it also has the floppy collar with the buttons exactly styled like they are made from uh, the antlers of deers. So that is pretty, pretty cool. But what adds even more is, is all the detail. I hope the camera will pick it up. Um, and the jersey, I got it for Rally Radio, is a bit in a rough shape. But there is also quite the patterning within the three stripes. And then the pattern on front is very much like a tablecloth used at Oktoberfest tables. So, and this was worn for an entire season. This was, was not a specialty uh, jersey. Awesome. So, Overall, a very well done jersey making reference to the local culture. For that, I really enjoy this jersey. 
How about the club that took it then to the next level is of course Köln with their carnival jer uh, jerseys. And there, some of them are hit and miss, some of them are way out there. For me, they hit the jackpot during the pandemic um, with this jersey here. Because not only is it a typical carnival jersey, it's wild. It achieves so much and basically hits all the points from from from, from above. First of all, you get the beautiful uh, smaller crest from the city of Cologne on the center, which is always part of the car carnival. Then the overall design is not a checkerboard. It's basically a reference to a clown costume made of little pieces of cloth that are just roughly sewn together and kind of give this uh, floppy look. So if you look a little bit closer, you can see there are drop shadows in, in there. You can see the stitches. Uh, you can definitely see the idea behind it, that it's made of bands of these little cloth pieces that kind of form the clown costume. That already is awesome. But then take it a notch further. Every piece of cloth has a symbol for the city of Cologne. You can make out, of course, the famous cathedral. You can make out the stadium. You can make out the gold, which is a symbol for cloud. You can make out the carnival cap. You can make out the funicular. You can make out the uh, bridge that goes over the Rhine River. You can have here two re references to the uh, crest, which is, of course, the crown from because the three crown the Three Kings Shrine is in Cologne, so the crown, and then the, uh, the theater from the Hermelin pattern. You have carnival symbols, you have the roses, because on Rose Monday is the, it's celebrated. You have the spiral, the stuff that you throw out, you have the drums, you have the Colonius Tower. Yeah, it's so many little details. It's actually, every time I look at this, I mean, I've pointed now all the details, but this is a, a jersey from a distance. Yes, I admit it looks wild, but it's a carnival jersey. It's supposed to look wild. But I love the details on it. It's an absolutely gorgeous, special Georgia uh, uh, Zill point that I bought. This, this is probably the uh, second or third most expensive jersey that I have now in my collection for the simple reason that when I saw it, yes, um, it did not sell out as quickly as I expected it to. But when I saw it, I had the feeling this is actually in a way the coolest jersey that Köln could have put out. And this one just represents the city and the club, which is always a crazy club, really, 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 really well. And now the last one that makes a jersey stand out is probably also the most difficult one to achieve. But there is one club as of late that has done this better than anyone else. And that is Venezia. Just be stylish, just be different. Venezia has a very unique color scheme what they have tried to do with it over the past years. And now I see that the, the, this is already over, but they have tried to make stylish stuff. Again, hooped look with these three. It just looks different. Now, but I think with, by re representing the three colors of the club, plus a very stylish sponsor, this jersey does a better job to me per, per person. It's also than the Kappa jerseys that followed after. Uh, what has, has, has I have said uh, also is that this one has the additional benefit of being the jersey worn in a promotion season. So that adds just a little bit. I hope I could demonstrate to you what I like to see in a football shirt. And it also explains why I like this one, because it takes kind of a traditional look. It modifies it a little bit. And there's a whole lot to look at. You can spend minutes, if not hours, of looking at everything that is in this jersey. And again, I think the Bundesliga jerseys, modern Bundesliga jerseys, do a better job at that than many others, except for the retro look, where I think the Italians are really good as of late. My last thought on that is, why are Germans so good at it? And I think it comes down that they got very late on this train. Bundesliga jerseys in the 80s, as I said, were rather boring. And it is also very easy that most Bundesliga jerseys are just a plain jer uh, jersey and it's all down to color blocking. Like a uh, shirt and pants are different colors. I can only think of Stuttgart that does something very unique and potentially Hertha with the stripes. But other than that, most German teams have just a plain shirt. 
and this you can use as a canvas to create many different things and that make and they are doing that because they know that you know um references to local teams is very very important in germany as is also in italy which are two countries that for the longest of times have not been unified they also are relatively young car countries made out of city states and i think this is why going a little bit with local detail is so important there let me know what you thought about my thoughts what do you like in a club jer uh, jer jer jersey uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more i'll talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye